Sweet. We're pretty deep in this tournament, Artosis. These two guys, interesting story. Supernova is so dominant yeah. uh, from the get-go here at the Intel Extreme Masters. And uh, uh, Vortex is just... Oh. Yeah. He's un unstoppable at this point no, in time. He looks he's, so good. He 3 0 4 GG. Yeah. Well, what do you think about this match? Who takes it? No clue. I, Absolutely I'm no gonna clue. I'm going to do the craziest prediction Please. ever. I think Vortex is going to take it. And it here's why. Here's why. 4 GG, really aggressive. Why did he keep losing? Because he kept attacking when he should have been defending. Who's more aggressive than 4GG? Supernova. Yeah, there's about two Terrans in the world more aggressive than him. Maybe Marine King and Supernova. So that might play into Vortex's plans. Uh, as long as he can lose at least one hatchery to Supernova, I think he'll take it. Well, <laughs> we'll have to see, you know, exactly uh, what Supernova has planned in this game. Obviously, I think... Supernova and everybody else is surprised that here Vortex is in 4GG's place, you know, doing so well. Yeah. Um, in, in, again, not even just beating 4GG, but completely annihilating him. I mean, 3-0, man. That's, that's unheard of. That's right. But Supernova has only lost one game in the whole tournament. His overall record is 10-1. and one. He won his group, and he looked like a badass. Look, he only had to beat two players to even get here. One of which was also in the top 12. So, also Artosis, no more Protoss is in the tournament. That's it. Protoss is what gone. Do you, what do you think of that? Well, I think I hope that uh, some of these Terran guys can end up winning, so it's not four Zergs left there. Could be four Zergs. Yeah. Zergs uh, really dominant right now, especially outside of Korea. Then again, inside of Korea, they're doing pretty well uh, as well. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we've got the game loaded up. Are you guys excited to be here at the Intel? <laughs> At the IEM, are you guys ready? I'm so, so pumped to, to see this game, especially these two, yeah. because I have no idea where it's gonna go. Well, we'll get right into it now, Tasis. Why don't you go ahead and sure. introduce us? Over here in the upper left, so far, uh, along with his opponent, probably one of the two best players pl as far as performance goes in this tournament, give it up for Supernova. And in the bottom right starting location, we have our Zerg player, Lucifron's brother, undefeated against 4GG. Give it up for Vortex. All right, so it's in Tomb Valley, cross spots this time. And that's going to be pretty good for Vortex. He wants to be as far away as possible so that the aggression of Supernova takes longer to get there and is less effective. Well, the barracks is going down now. This is uh, in Tomb Valley, and it's a map where uh, if you're, you know, let's say you both share the top, um, or, or let's just say, for instance, you both share the left, you both share the right. Uh, rushes on this map are very good. You can put a, a bunker right here, tuck a Marine in there so that the Marine can cover the bunker until the bunker finishes, and really destroy uh, the expansion hatchery. But uh, in this case, they're so far away, that probably won't be an issue. Yeah. In fact, will Supernova even go for two barracks play? It looks like probably not. It's looking very much like it's just going to be a one barracks expand. And, you know, that's still completely doable. It's still a great build on this map. But this is the one map that if you're going to two racks, this is probably a good one for it. Well, it does look like we're going to have a fast expand here for Supernova. Do you think we're going to see the Banshee play that we saw uh, previously, Artosis? Probably. Think so? Probably. I mean... Hellion Banshee or just... Yeah, I think Hellion Banshee. I don't... I don't know that Supernova's going to go Cloak. I mean, for GG, he pretty much always goes Cloak. Supernova, it's a little bit harder to tell. He's going to be aggressive in a lot of ways, but I don't know if that's one of them. As you can see here, the drone now uh, moving back out. There's not much else he can do here, especially with the Marine. Might as well send that drone back and get some extra minerals. And, uh, you know, I love that Vortex is actually drone scouting in all these games against Terran. Because if you don't, then eventually Korean Terrans figure it out, and they will just double proxy 11 racks you. But by doing this in every game, there's no way that's going to happen. There could be two barracks play, but most likely not going to be 11-11. All right, double gases. So we're most likely definitely positively Artos is going to see uh, quick Banshees here. And, um, you know, I guess the, the question is, is are these Banshees going to do any damage uh, so when he goes that? I mean... Vortex has had some pretty bulletproof uh, defenses here. Yeah, you know, uh, I wouldn't be surprised 
if he just kind of follows what 4GG was doing, because 4GG just kept killing hatcheries. And uh, if Vortex loses a hatchery to Supernova, I would definitely put Supernova a little bit higher than 4GG as far as skill goes. Yeah, I, I, I got to go with you on that one. Now the Marines are out here. They want to see if there's any additional Zerglings. Occasionally you can get a stray uh, Overlord, for instance. That Zergling does get away and will heal up all that extra energy. And um, Factory. So let's see if the Factory uh, goes ahead and makes a tech lab here um, while the Starport's on the way. And after that, I'll probably take the Factory, put it here where the Barracks is, then go for the uh, Hellion Banshee that we were talking about. Yep. And Vortex, in the meantime, will he be going for more than four Queens? Because that's what he's been going for every single game. And that's been part of the problem with dealing with Hellion Banshee. You, if you have six Queens, you're going to deal with it way, way better. But if you just have two out there, that's something that can be killed off. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Now we got the SCB here to spot for this at extra base. Now the SCB just barely did not see the hatchery, so it's hard to confirm, in fact, that uh, that's what's coming for him. So the uh, four Marines are going to come up here and do a little bit of pushing. I like this a lot. He might actually get a force cancel. He might even get an Overlord. We'll see, though. The Overlord's turning around now. He does not want to lose those. Can he force a cancel on this hatchery? And even if he doesn't, a lot of damage being done to it is really strong as well. All right, the Overlord getting low. In the red now, and it does go down. Wow. He should probably leave now, since there are 10 Zerglings on the way. I don't think he's going to get a forced cancel here. You know what? He might be doing this just so that he can go ahead and have more damage on it for when his Hellions and Banshees go. Oh, you are so smart, Artosis. That could be exactly what's going on here. And in fact, he is going for that cloaked Banshee build, just like 4GG was. Look at this, dealing a lot of damage here. And in fact, the Hellions do come in, so the Marines are going to help him clean up these Zerglings as oh, quickly wow. as possible. Look at the uh, angle at which the Hellions are coming in here at. Whoa! Supernova. Uh -oh. Well, I got to say, man, it looks like people have figured out Vortex's opening. Between 4GG and Supernova, I'm sure they looked at those games and saw, wow, if you just send four Marines with this build? Bam! Just done for. Well, I guess this means that Supernova's going to lose now because he got that first hatch. We know what happens with that. Yep. That occurs with Vortex, right? Well, it was a cancel, though, so... That's nah, true. Yeah, we'll see. Now Vortex is going to have to run away. He's getting a lot of lings right now. And Supernova going to clean up a lot of these creep tumors. I'm a little bit scared for him. If he stays on this creep too long and that speed finishes up, he will end up losing a lot of units. All right, just pushing back these queens. Again, so much damage being dealt. Oh, my God, getting that queen at the last possible second. Wow. And getting away just before speed. This is so rough for Vortex. Now what we got to figure out is uh, can uh, Vortex come up with something from here? If you know, um, the Banshee comes through here hoping to find a drone. He just barely missed that drone. Here comes the Banshee now with Cloak. Layer uh, just now finishes. So he's going to get a lot of drones. This could get out of control, Artosis. Two kills, three kills, it already, uh, and now four. It already feels that way, Tasteless. I mean, he's killing so many drones. He's canceled the hatch. He's killed a queen. He's killed a ton of lings. And what has he lost? Nothing that he really cares about. Overseer finishing very quickly right now. And does not escape. Well, so one small victory there for Vortex. Yeah, and right now, Supernova is going into mech. So this is going to be a lot of fun to see. Uh, he's been using mech pretty much exclusively here at this tournament against Zerg. And he's just he's done it with just such great power. Will Vortex know how to deal with this? Hitting this hatchery again here. Meanwhile, a bunch of Hellions coming down here from uh, the top and hitting these Lings. Ooh, he wants to keep those Lings alive. It's so important. That is a lot of Hellions. And he's going to force another cancel. And this you, is getting out of control. And, you know, here, here's the thing, Artos, is you cannot stay on two base uh, against a Terran who's on two base for very long. Cloak Especially again. when they're going back. <laughs> He's hitting uh, these drones so hard. Forced to cancel. I don't know, Artos. Uh, granted, 4GG forced um, you know, or killed a hatch for the first time. This is way heavier than what we saw um, in the 4GG games. Yeah. Well, the two queens and a ton of links coming out. Uh, he doesn't want to go up that ramp. It'll just be so uh, inefficient. Smart move here. Just go behind the minerals. Oh, that is a good move, yeah. Well, there's a spire about to finish up, so this could be scary as well. Uh, the mutas coming out will obviously kill off these Hellions, and I think that might actually be what Vortex is waiting for. He needs to get something going. Killing that Hellions might be just that. And uh, the queens are taking a lot of damage here. It looks like... Um, 
I don't know. You know, the, the thing is, uh, Supernova's kiting these links so well. Oh, this is going to be gross. These Zerglings just going in here. They are surrounding them, but look at how many links oh he's killing. Oh, my God. Wow. You know, that was not an attack that necessarily paid for itself. We have, what, uh, five Zerglings coming out of there? Again, Supernova playing brilliantly. Yeah, look at this. The units lost tab. Absolute madness for this early in the game, how uneven that is. He's just, Supernova is being ridiculously efficient, and he's going mech, and this is the early game. You, if mech is being this efficient in the early game against you, imagine the late game. The Banshee on the run. I don't know why he's micro around like that if it's going to die. <laughs> um, and back here at the Terran's base, not exactly muta proof. He has Thors, but, you know, you need a little bit more than that. Uh, to hold up, a, you know, a, a flock of units like we have right here. Mm -hmm. And in fact, right now, we have a Baneling Ness and Infestation pick going up for our Zerg players. So that's that's kind of interesting. The Baneling Ness is really a weird choice because Banelings, of course, do not do well against tanks or Thors or against Hellions that are microed well or against the Banshee that's in the sky. It's, it's a weird choice. But anyways, we do see a Magic Box coming in, going after this Thor right away, and he will pick that one off. In fact, going to go after this other one. Wow, this Mutalisk attack doing a great job so far. He needs to repair this Thor. Can he do it in time? No. No, but another Thor pops out, and he will repair this one uh, ASAP. Well, he can trade all day like this, is, but that is a lot of SMPs. With the next Thor popping out, he does have to run. But killing that many Thors this early on is really expensive and takes a long time to replace them. Some turrets being placed down here. Probably would just be better if you landed the orbital. Uh, but the Thors now are going to chase out these uh, Mutas once again, taking out one. Hellions uh, still in the middle of the map, making sure the Zerg doesn't have control of that Zelnaga Watchtower. And Vortex, really surprisingly, has continued to make Mutas, so he actually still has 12 despite losing quite a few there. Now we do have these Hellions running over to these Queens. They have a lot of energy, so the Hellions do turn around. And let's take a look at the supplies here, guys. It's 130 to about 100, 105. Yeah. And, you know, that's really bad for Zerg because Zerg, Zerg right, let's, let me put it like this. When the, um, the Terran's at about 135 supply, the Zerg should be at about 160, 170. Yeah. And it's not happening. It's, it's actually the opposite. If I had to see these supplies, I didn't know the races, I would assume that uh, Supernova was a Zerg and Vortex was a Terran. So yeah. this is really bad news. Well, Vortex realizes that he's in just a terrible heap of trouble and is almost done his hive. Probably going to go for Broodlords, but Ultras are really good against Thors in the right numbers. All right, we'll see if he goes in and does that. The Hellion's now coming around here. He may try to go ahead and get some more drones, just hurt him a little bit more. Uh, coming in here, melting these links, and the drones! Oh, they're dying just so quickly. Plus one Hellions with blue flame. Just lining up those drones and destroying everything. Really nice play. You know, the Hellion's not as useful in this phase of the game. Supernova so, has killed 35 workers oh by now. Oh, my God. Oh. And if we look at the unit count here, 54 drones to 79 SCVs plus five mules right now. You know, I hate to say it, but this has been a completely and terribly one-sided game so Really far. has been. I mean, there's never been a moment where I thought Vortex was in a lead or even an equal position to Supernova. Now, in, uh, in Vortex's defense, he is doing a pretty good job of, um, of just defending. Um, well, I guess I shouldn't say defending. Staying alive, not getting forced out of the game yet. Uh, he's definitely a tenacious nerd, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. You know, one thing uh, that is working for Vortex is Supernova doesn't know that there's actually uh, a hive already out. So, if he has just a handful of Thors as his actual anti-air army, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, that is very true. He is getting a Raven now, and I don't know if that's for, uh, you know, uh, Seeker missiles or Point Defense drone. Probably not for Point Defense drone, I think, but it, um, or, you know, just to detect the, uh, the creep tumors. But yeah, we'll see. I think, it, I think it has a lot to do with the creep tumors. And, of course, you've got to watch out for Burrow with Roaches. It can be useful at times against Mech if you catch him off guard. So that's going to be just kind of a useful unit overall. All right. Here are the creep tumors. The Raven uh, should be meeting up with the army now. And there it is. And he's going to go ahead and move down here to the bottom right and clean up all the hard work um, that Vortex put into kind of you know, having a, a highway here on the map for his units. Well, Are the Broodlords out? They're on the way. Paces, you know what? This is... He has literally... 
just a handful of Thors, six of them, and one Raven as his anti-air with this army. The rest of it's Banshees and Hellions. So these eight Broodlords actually could do a good job. Let's see if he gets this hatchery before the army gets here. All right, and he is going to do what? Okay, okay one hit point there for a second. That was, that would have been weird. Now he's running. This really goes to show you the speed of Broodlords is almost non-existent as this yeah. is a high-speed Thor Broodlord chase. <laughs> well, here come the Broodlords. If they can trap some of them, that will be great. He needs to reduce this Thor count as best he can right now. All right, here come the Lynx now. And look at that, taking down a Thor already. These Broodlords pushing back Supernova. And, you know, Supernova has dominated this whole game, but the tech of our Zerg player Vortex is doing a great job. If he comes back from this, I don't even know if there's a word in the English language for, for what I will be feeling in that moment. That is insane. Uh, making a, a planetary over here. He needs to get some anti-air. Does he have, it looks like he only has Thors right now. Yeah, he's starting to make a few Vikings. He added a single starport, and he does have a reactor on one. So he can make three Vikings at a time, which will help. But, I mean, these Broodlords are coming for him right now. All right. This is the one moment for Vortex to come back. Can he do it? He will easily destroy uh, the planetary with these lings and Broodlings chewing up uh, the uh, out exterior of it. Now pushing forward over here. He needs to get more Vikings. Uh, he has, let's see, looks like um, he's got three Vikings out so far. Not enough for this amount of Corruptors and Mutas. Oh my god, Artosis. Are, are we going to see Vortex actually win this? It could be, but he's got to watch out. These Vikings are there now, and they're going to do a pretty good job because as the Corruptors come up, they will be targeted down by Thors. In fact, Vortex is starting to split everything up. A lot of damage being done to three of these Broodlords. The other one's not even touched yet, though. Yeah, the uh, Thor volley's definitely hitting these Broodlords over here. Closing in, he wants to send these Lynx in, but there's just too many Hellions at the moment. Lynx coming in here, trying to engage with him. Hellions backing up. Three more Broodlords on the way. We're down to four with one at nine HP. It goes down, another one goes down. Two left, but three more again on the way over here. He's continuing to make more and more and more. In the meantime, these Blue Flame Hellions stopping any ground reinforcements. Uh-oh, his Broodlord count is severely dropping. And in fact, is he gonna run away or is he just waiting? And in fact, he's just waiting, but those Thor volleys with their splash damage dealing a lot to these Broodlords. It's one of the first times I've really seen Thors take on Broodlords and kind of will come out with a win. You know what it is? The Blue Beam Hellions are killing the Broodlings so fast yeah. that as they land, they do like one hit and that's it. That's right. So you just basically have the Broodlords damage itself, but really the power behind them is that of the Broodling. And it looks like he has cleaned it up. Vortex in a lot of trouble, but right now he is switching into Ultras. We'll see if he can get something done with that. He has, uh, well, he has a 500 gas stocked up. That's not enough for the amount of Ultras that he needs to take on this number of Thors. Supernova expanding here and also taking this location over here. No orbital there yet, but will be soon. And that's it, GG, he just taps out. Yeah, he realizes there is no chance at this point, but you know what? brought it back for a moment. He actually yeah. made Supernova a bit scared. He almost caught him off guard enough to kill him. Um, it's funny, because for, what, like 80% of that game, it was just Supernova beating down Vortex. Now, one thing going right for Vortex, this guy still manages to get uh, Broodlords, push them all the way across the map, take out the, uh, the um, what, the fourth base there uh, for our Terran player Supernova, and, uh, you know, hold the front. Yeah, that's pretty insane, Artosis. Now, had he gone back home with the Broodlords, this game might have looked pretty different. But, you know, it's a tough call because how often do you actually pull away when you have Broodlords? You normally just hold your ground. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm a little bit scared for Vortex at this point. It feels like he's been figured out uh, by Supernova with, I'm sure, help from 4GG as they are good friends. Uh, both used to be on OGS, of course. So uh, that's rough because he just tweaked the build that 4GG used in the early game a little tiny bit. And it smashed Vortex in the early game, just destroyed him. He's going to have to start countering the counter to his build. He needs to make more queens. You know, you made a really good point with those uh, those four Marines right at the start. Because I was saying he needs to get out of there. There's too many mm. There's too many lings on the way. You don't want to lose those four. You want to kill an Overlord. And then you said, you know what? He might be doing that to damage the hatchery because yeah. he knows that he can probably kill it just like 4GG did. Um, but at the same time, Supernova definitely reacting correctly uh, and just allowing, um, you know, uh, Vortex to, uh, to, to feed into him. 
Yeah. Um, now, considering how much damage Vortex actually did, or, or, or I should say absorbed back there, this guy still has a shot against Supernova. Yeah, I think he has to does. alter his opener slightly. Exactly. I think that's what it's going to take. But if he can do that, I still give him a chance to take this home. Yeah. I, I, he could absolutely do it. I have not actually seen a non-Korean player that looks quite like this. Yeah, he definitely He's has got this very out there style. style. Um, and I believe, are you guys ready? We hand it over to you? All right, we're going to hand it over to Dan and Clares for a little bit more in-depth analysis. Okay, guys. Welcome to the analysis desk here. As, uh, well, we saw for game one of Supernova Vortex there. Now, this is, these are two players that I know very, very well in terms of stylistically. Yeah. And Vortex in that middle game, he was looking a little shaky. He tried to mix it up a bit there uh, from his normal rhetoric of ZVT, uh, but it just didn't yeah. really pan out. There's this weird thing that Vortex does where he will do huge attacks but still have enough drone recovery to be able to go on to the next stage of the game. So if we actually hop into the game, though, we see that this is starting to not pan out nearly as well. So at this point in the game, Vortex is just kind of trying to hold the front. He's just lost this third base, and this is generally a time where you would see a Zerg rebuild. This is where we would, we're seeing Violet rebuild in his series uh, against Bomber. But still, Vortex just goes relentlessly for these sorts of bust-in plays, whether it's with Ling Baneling or whether it's with just pure Mutalisk here. Mm. And just losing a bit too much. Sure, he took out two Thors, but again, what are you really trying to go for by doing this? He just barely delayed this orbital command. And then all of a sudden, he needs to devote time to drone saturation. And oh, yeah. now it's coming up. But it's so late, and Vortex is doing the weird thing of playing from behind a mecking player. This actually almost never happens, so. <laughs> it's a little weird for me because I feel that Vortex um, would have been better in this game number one, just sticking with his straight up play of only that initial wave of eight or nine mutalisks. Now, yeah. um, he went uh, far and above that in this game. And again, he just well, didn't have the longevity, didn't really control those, and he sacrificed a lot of them going into those engagements. Yeah. Um, but again, as I want to echo the sentiments of Artosis, it feels as if Supernova opening up with that mech play knows how Vortex is going to be playing here. Yeah. After seeing not only how he played against him yesterday in the group stage, but also against 4GG before. Yeah, I think that's so significant because the exact same move was pulled by Vortex against 4GG, running in with all the laying Mutalisk, and it flubbed in the exact same way there too. So yeah. back to you guys at the desk since the next game's starting.